What's going on guys welcome back to another video and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to create this cool cloning effect inside of After Effects. For this tutorial all you need is the Sapphire plugins but if you don't have them you could get away without using them with some other different effects but I'm not going to be showing that in this video so you'll just have to experiment with that on your own time but in this tutorial just use the Sapphire plugins and then all the effects that are already built into After Effects and you should be good. This is a pretty simple and easy tutorial, so you shouldn't have any problems. But if you do, leave them down in the comments below and I'll try to get back to you guys and help you guys out. But let's get straight into this tutorial. So what I'm going to do is actually rotoscope our subject here, which is Marshmallow. Um, so once you guys have your clip, I already have this clip set up in this timeline right here. And I'm also going to make this smaller. Just so it's easier. Let's see. All right, so what I'm going to do is select this clip right here and go to the roto brush, select him, and then it brings up this other layer right here. So I'm just going to select his body, just a rough kind of selection, and then it tries its best to select everything. Holding down Alt will remove your uh, brush, and then holding down left click will add your brush to it. So I'm just creating a rough brush around him right now and this line this outline doesn't have to be too perfect also use 2.0 not the 1.0 but if you do have to use the 1.0 it's fine it'll still work but the 2.0 is just a lot better and cleaner and also change the quality to best and then i'm going to make this feathering a lot higher we'll do like 30 so you can see how that looks right there looking pretty good i'm just gonna kind of fix this right here that's pretty good. That's not bad. So that's our first frame right there. So we're just going to start going ahead on this timeline. Each frame one by one. And it's doing a pretty good job tracking the hand right here. And I don't think I have to really do anything. Looks like it did everything by itself. So what you want to do once you have your subject selected is just freeze your roto brush. And this may take a while depending on how many frames you have, but I only have 39, so it's going pretty quick. Once that's done, just exit out of that and you can go back into your original comp. And this is what we have. It's not perfect. It kind of gets messes up right there at the end. You can kind of see that we'll just cut it right there. That's good. All right, so once we have this, I'm just going to duplicate it once. And then on the bottom layer, just delete the roto brush. All right, so what I'm going to do is duplicate this roto brush layer, just like that. So now I have two roto brush layers. And what I'm going to do with this middle one is go into the positioning. If you hit P on your keyboard, it brings it up. And I'm just going to go like two frames over, hit a keyframe on that. And then we'll go at the very end and move this over like that. So if I play this back, it slowly reveals. Also, I'm just going to move this all the way to the start. There we go. I'm just going to highlight these keyframes, hit Fn or F9, and go into your graph editor. And then it might show up this weird graph editor kind of thing. If you're in the value graph, so you want to change that to speed graph. Make sure you're just selecting your position. And just kind of make it look like this. So it jumps out quick. Like that, and it slows down. I think I'm going to do one more. So what I'll do is copy this one, paste it with the second the bottom one so right here i'll select it in this different color right here this is the one that we're going to be editing next so with our positioning value again i'm just going to move this frame right there so what's the positioning i'm just going to move it around here somewhere where it looks the same like that and i'll just move this keyframe over you can see they like go out after each other. So like second one and then the third one goes 
and then they just slowly slow down at the end. So this is already looking super cool, but now I'm going to add a Sapphire plugins to it. So if we go into the Sapphire and distort right here, we can find the warp chroma. And I'm just going to apply that to just this bottom one right now. So what I'm going to do is go up to this steps right here in the warp chroma, make that 20. And the Z distance, you can kind of mess with it to see what kind of looks good. I'm going to move this to 0 0.920. So we have that yellow and blue kind of fringing on the side of the chroma effect. And I'll just copy that, paste it onto the other one. All right, so I just copied and pasted the warp chroma on these two layers. We can do it on the top if we want, like that. But I think I'm just going to leave it with these two other ones chromaed out. These ones that are duplicated. And then we can also change the color of it by going to the color one right here. We can mess with the colors with it. So like you can make it green. Or I guess it's like yellowish green. And then go into our other one. Make this like blue that's looking pretty cool there's a lot of different things you can do with this um you can add tv damage which is another sapphire plugin it gives it that tv kind of look i'll just apply it to this one too but yeah there's a lot of different things you can change with these sliders right here um but i'm just going to leave everything default because just for the sake of the tutorial, I don't want it to be super long because there are infinite amount of controls you can change here. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe, leave a comment and like the video and peace out.